Hey everybody, welcome back to Vani. I hope you all enjoyed your Thanksgiving break, had a nice long weekend, spent some time with your family. I know I did, and I actually got to spend some time with my grandfather, who used to work for the railroad. And uh, I have a treat for you guys. I had a nice conversation with him about what it was like working on the railroad, and I recorded it just for you guys. So I'm gonna play that back during the time lapse. But first, what I wanna do is I wanna show you guys a little something about those pick lists that I was talking about at the end of the last episode. So I'm going to show you how to use them, and it's honestly, it's a real game changer for me. So check it out. If you go up to the top left and you click the little uh, martini glass here, the little search thing, there's an arrow here. And what you could do is click this arrow, and you can click create pick list. So let's say I want to create a pick list for shrubs. Let's, I'll just say scenery. Okay, so... Now it says pick list scenery. So what I can do then, let's say I like this tree over here. I work with this tree quite a bit. I can go for my little get object thingamajig, find it, JVC spruce. So then I can select this and just drag it right over, just like that. And there it is. And now it's saved. Let's say I like this tree. Do the same thing. I can drag it in. And you'll see that I have a couple of pick lists already set up, and you can name them whatever you want. Lighting, crossings, cars and trucks, signs, scenery, whatever. So what's really cool about this, though, is that when you select, let's say, cars and trucks. So I got a few in here. If I close out the objects tab, and I select trailer cargo, what it'll do is it'll open up that tab. Well, maybe it won't. It won't open up the tab, but it'll take you right to that, that asset. So if I click on flat nose truck, brings me right to it. If I go back to my trees, let's say I like a tree that might be a different size. Click it, takes me to there, and I can select any of the ones nearby. So I think that that's pretty cool. All right, so the next thing I wanna show you, and I talked about it in my last video, and I didn't get around to, to shooting it because I don't have any time, um, is the, the scale of this route. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna zoom out all the way and just show you how big this area is. If you look over here, this is Old Town. Actually, no, I'll take that back. This is Old Town over here. This is Vani, what we're currently working on. If I scale back even further, you get to see the size of this route is enormous. And a lot of it is not finished. So don't don't think that, you know, I'm just in here kind of like touching up some stuff. There's a whole slew of track all over the place that is just blank. There's just nothing. So we're going to be getting into that later on. What my goal is right now is that this is actually the end of the line and you'll see that most of this is complete. This will make a nice route to operate on just by itself. So what I'm aiming for is to actually finish up all of this up to somewhere in here, which is where I'm gonna cut it off and uh, and then release it to you guys. And then we'll continue to make uh, this video series and we'll, we'll work our way down, down the line, um, actually to the beginning of the route. because We're actually working backwards um, you'll see that over here there's an enormous yard. I don't want to spoil it because I'm going to do a whole tour for you guys later on. Uh, hopefully for Christmas or maybe for the New Year or something like that. Whatever you guys like to see, I want to get it out to you because I really enjoy operating this route and I think you guys will too. So uh, with that, let's get into the time lapse, right? Time lapse. I just wanted to mention something quick before we get into this bit with my grandfather. A lot of you have been commenting on my last couple videos asking if I have anything available on the download station. And the short answer right now is just I don't. I don't have anything on the download station, unfortunately. I've been working on this map for a long time, and that's about it. And as I mentioned just a moment ago, I'd like to get this available to you guys sometime in the near future. But if you're looking to play a map that I've created, N3V just released a new version of Trains called Trains Model Railroader Edition. And I actually have a map in there. It's called Franklin Avenue Industrial. So if you're looking to play something that I've built and detailed, uh, take a look at Trains Model Railroader Edition. I think you're also going to be able to download it for Trains in New Era, but I'm not 100% sure. If you happen to get it, leave me a comment. Let me know what you guys think. I hope you guys enjoy it. Fun stuff. I just 
want to point out that this was a very impromptu conversation with my grandfather around a campfire. You can hear a lot of other people in the background. I did my best to edit it down. My grandfather hired out with the New York Central sometime in the early 60s, although he wasn't able to give me an exact year. Back then, train crews consisted more or less of a fireman, a brakeman, a conductor, and an engineer. He worked through all of the major mergers, Penn Central, Conrail, and finally CSX before retiring in the 90s. Early on, he worked out of Kingston, New York, along the River Line, as well as the former Ulster in Delaware, known as the Catskill Mountain Branch. After Kingston closed as a terminal, he had to make the drive to Selkirk, where he'd work as a conductor for road trains headed south to New Jersey or west to Syracuse. The story you're about to hear, he's talking about working as an extra crew member on a job he wasn't familiar with. The crew was doing a technique called kicking cars, and he was a brakeman in charge of throwing the switch. I believe the scenario takes place in the 1960s, around 40 miles west of Kingston, along the Catskill Mountain Branch. You didn't throw the switch on time? What happened? Oh, well, you had, you had different, you had different conductors and different uh, uh, crew, and uh, uh, there was a time when I went up with this conductor that he didn't say that, uh, he, he took it for granted that I knew that what we were doing. We were going up, we stopped, we made a cut, and then he went up. My job was to stand by a, uh, the uh, switch, and uh, they kicked the car up, and then the engineer came back and, throw that switch! Throw it! Throw it! Mm -hmm. Jesus. <laughs> wow. <laughs> if I didn't throw the switch, holy Christ. And that way the car went into where the, the company, wherever it was going, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> wow. Everybody had a different way of doing things, and, and, and this one conductor, uh, he, I, I can't say it was bad, it was just that I, I didn't know the routine that they were nuts to going. I was an extra man, yeah. and I was just filling in for the guy that was normally on the job, you know what I mean? As he used to tell it, if he didn't throw the switch in time, the car would have rolled the 40 miles downgrade back to Kingston. It's a story I've heard countless times. He's 86 years old, so it's difficult to get many details, or even a new story from him. But back in the early days, there were no radios or battery-operated lanterns. Communication with other crew members was done with nothing more than kerosene lanterns and toots of the locomotive horn. Another story he recalls pretty frequently is riding on the end of a cut of cars, being shoved upgrade, around a bend, at night, in the pouring rain, with nothing but a dying kerosene lantern to signal the crew in the cab. It's a thought that stresses him out even today. I asked him what it was like being away from home all the time. I had a family and I loved my wife and I loved my family. And the other two guys were good too as far as that goes. But they told him, you either leave, we're closing Kingston and uh, they're going down to Weehawken, New Jersey. And they're going to stay down there in the, the brakeman's room. The brakeman's room is just where you change your clothes, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So these two guys from Kingston, they said, all right, we'll have in order to keep our seniority. I, I didn't do it. I had to give up my seniority at that time. And um, then guys went down there. There's two guys in Kingston. I remember them. Um, but anyway, um, they went down there, and they, they only came back on weekends to see their wife and their children, you know, and I couldn't do that. I, I love my family too much to... So anyway, I had to take another job in the meantime, and I wanted to get back on the railroad again, and I had a guy help me, and uh, I had to start out of Selkirk. And uh, from Selkirk, I was on the, on the road all the time. You know what I mean? Yeah. But in Kingston here, there was a time when uh, you, uh, you either had yard seniority or road seniority, and I had to make a switch, and. Uh, uh, when it come time to, for the road in order to go down there, uh, New Jersey, I didn't want to do it. I wanted to be with But in the meantime, I lost my son, and that's after I went back on the railroad again. The job that when I went back on again, I, uh, I, I was on it from Selkirk to Syracuse, and boy, that was another Another job where you weren't with your family. Christ, it took me an hour and some minutes to get to Selkirk. And after I got to Selkirk, we, the, the crew, we laid there for another half hour waiting for a dispatcher to tell us what we were going to do and where we were going. So by the time the train left Selkirk and went towards Syracuse, it was another uh, two and a half hours from the time I left Kingston. And uh, we, we had to work, in other words, uh, 
going from Selkirk to Syracuse, you know what I mean? At different places, they'll, they'll leave the cars and so on to come up. And once we got to Syracuse, we had to lay in a god dang motel for 10 hours, eight to 10 hours. And then uh, we'd hear from the dispatcher and uh, uh, in the motel we were at to, that we're gonna take a train and work back to Selkirk. I have a lot of fond memories seeing him hanging out the window of a locomotive or a caboose, waving to me while my dad and I watched the train roll by. Well, the yard job, you were home all the time. You worked eight hours, and uh, like, uh, I don't know, uh, w were you alive on the Fla uh, Fox, uh, old Flatbush Road, was it? Yeah, Flatbush Avenue. I got uh, pictures of that. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, when the caboose. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, your father came out, and uh, 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 as we were pulling in the yard, I think it was, uh, you saw me on the caboose there. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed that little conversation I had with my grandfather. Uh, it's conversations like that that I really love. I love hearing from uh, engineers and conductors with experience on the railroad, real life stories, stuff like that. It, it, it just brings so much more to life and uh, it makes the, the model railroading and virtual railroading experience that much more fulfilling. Uh, so let's get back into this time lapse and what I'm actually doing here. This building here is the Glosser Brothers Warehouse. Uh, it services inbound loads of boxcars full of goods that are unloaded for distribution to their company's um, grocery retail chains. Uh, I struggled for a little while to find a building that I liked that would fit in this spot. I'm not really too sold on this one, that's why I had to kind of adapt it with the, um, the loading dock. I think it might be a little bit too big and too industrial for this area, but I'm going to leave it for now. I, I might come back and make some adjustments, maybe replace it with something when I find a better building. I'm also not really too happy with the way that the siding is. I had to kind of cock it on a strange angle, and it's not parallel with the main track. And to me, that does not it doesn't look right. It doesn't jive right for me. So I don't know. I'm going to have to go in, maybe do a little bit of work on the main line or the siding track, one or the other, in between uh, now and the next episode. I don't know. We'll see what happens. And here I am again, I'm trying to use these little, uh, these details, these road marking details. I think they're really cool. Um, I, I wish there was a way to disable the shadow, but I figured I'm going to put them in. We'll see what happens. Maybe I'll leave them. Uh, I don't like them. I don't know. I think that they look really great. I just don't like that shadow. It drives me nuts. I thought this was a nice little dividing um, marker, a uh, land marker. I'm not really sure to do what to do with the big area in between the railroad tracks and the fence. But it, this is something I've seen a lot where there's kind of a divider between people's backyards and industrial areas or um, railroad tracks or whatever it might be. And I thought the trees would be used as kind of like a sound barrier to block, you know, any noise from the freight car switching and stuff like that going into people's homes. The ground feels a little bit empty to me. I don't know what else I could put in there, maybe a little bit more debris. Um, I, I really am not too sure. If you guys have any ideas of what I could add in there, let me know. Yeah, it's this song again. Sorry guys, I'm still trying to find some music. I really like this jive though, I wish I could have more music that, that kind of felt like this. So right through here I'm switching out these switch stands. I'm switching them out with these new Sentry uh, switch stands. Um, I can't remember who, who uh, made them at the moment, I'll have to look it up and put it in the comments, but they're, they're on the download station, they're called New Century Switch Stand, and um, they're, they're really cool, they look great. You, they, they have uh, different color flags, uh, no flags, ballast, no ballast options, a lot of options for any kind of switch track prototype that you're trying to replicate.
I was kind of thinking the guy who lived in this house is probably a redneck. He'd have a big pickup truck. It'd probably be red. I don't know. I was looking for a hot rod or something like that. I thought that would be kind of cool. Nice touch. So the outer siding here at Vani is known as Agway. And um, let me check my notes here. It is named for the longtime railroad customer who owns the feed store next to the outer, outer of the two sidings. Um, so this would actually be where all those hopper cars are unloaded. Uh, I need to change out some details to make it kind of represent that a little bit better. But uh, that would be a destination for all these hopper cars. Again, I'm just adding some trackside details. Uh, some of those flangers, horns, whistle signals, um, things like that. So this area I kind of struggled with for a while as to, to what to put in here. And I eventually settled with a baseball field. And uh, I, I put this in after um, somebody had commented on my last video. Actually, the user named Mel Mel was actually my 100th subscriber and commented that I should add a school. And uh, this would be a perfect spot for a school, but instead I had already built this baseball field. I think it's a nice detail. I might add the school maybe across the street to kind of help fill it out and make it more make more sense. Uh, but I think this baseball field is a great touch. I wish there was people that were playing on it that I could add in. This baseball field really completed this area for me. For some reason, it just tied it all together. It really made sense for me and what Vani is supposed to be, a small town kind of in the middle of the nowhere. Um, it, everything is very close together, very community-based. And um, to have that baseball field right next to the railroad tracks, right next to the, the industrial area, it just made so much sense to me. Yeah, I tried throwing in some of these baseball players that I found on the download station, but they look like they're from Trains 2004. They're those little flat 3D weird, I don't know. But I think the cars are enough to suggest that there's people there playing. I also added a little sound file uh, bite thing in there that that's, uh, it sounds like people are actually playing baseball there. People cheering and, and uh, that sort of thing. Again, here I'm doing another kind of uh, landscape barrier where uh, the trees could act as a noise dampening, noise absorbing sort of thing for the, from the railroad. A view obstruction so kids aren't distracted when they're playing baseball. I know I was when I was a kid. Yeah, all right. Wouldn't it be so much better if there were people out on that playing field or in the bleachers? Man, I wish I could do some asset creation because that, that, that would totally bring this area so much more to life. Anyway, here we are at the end of the episode. I hope you guys enjoyed it up to this point. I really tried really hard this time to keep the camera steady um, when I was building. So I, I hope that it's a little bit better. I hope you guys notice a little bit of a difference. Uh, I'm going to try to continue to improve to keep the camera steady when I'm building and not zip all over the place. Um, but I want to go over a couple more things with you guys before we get out of this episode. Um, this building, I, I'm almost positive I'm going to change, change out at some point. It's it's big, it's ugly, it doesn't fit. Well, it's a nice building, I gotta say. Jointed Rail, they did a nice job on it. But it just doesn't fit this area. I was looking for something a little bit more like a brick building. Um, something a little bit more beat up, sort of like this guy over here. But whatever, we'll see what happens. Um, I'm looking to get to you guys two more episodes before the year is over. Um, I want to get you one more Let's Play by December 21st. Uh, so that's two weeks from today. And I want to get a tour to you guys before the end of the year. Um, the next uh, episode of this Let's Play, or Let's Build, it's not a Let's Play, it's a Let's Build. Um, we're going to continue down the line to the very end of Vani. Um, I'll probably do a lot of this scenicing off camera because it's, I don't know, maybe we'll see. 
Um, but this brings us down to Iron City and the very, very end of the Vani Branch, which just dead ends down here with a runaround track. So we'll continue on that, and then we'll start our next project, which I think is going to be a coal mine, and it'll be another big build, kind of like the oil refinery. And you guys seem to really like that oil refinery video, so I want to put out some more like that. Um, I hope this video wasn't too boring. There wasn't really a ton of super detail work that I could do here, but you know what? You can't super detail everything. Um, my goal was to get this video to you guys this Wednesday the 7th. And uh, if you're watching it Wednesday the 7th, it's probably be going to be kind of late. If you're watching it Thursday morning, I apologize. I had a very difficult week. You could probably hear it in my voice. If you follow me on social media, you'll know that I, my cat passed away on uh, Monday morning, very unexpectedly, very young, very tragic. And um, it, so it's been tough. You can hear it in my voice. It's been really tough to, to get this last little bit of this episode out. I had to record the voiceover. I had to record the closing. Um, I'm looking forward to reading your comments on this episode, and uh, I hope to see you guys in the next one. I hope you enjoy. Make sure you follow me on uh, Snapchat, follow me on Twitter and Instagram, approach underscore medium uh, on all the social media stuff. I, I give sneak peeks on my videos. I talk about whatever kind of stupid stuff I'm doing throughout the day. Uh, you could follow me when I'm going on my commute, whatever. I post railroad photos. It's fun stuff like that. Check it out. Uh, any one of those. Um, social media is, is, is pretty cool. So anyway, I hope to see you guys in the next episode. I hope you enjoyed. Um, take care. Have a good weekend. I'll see you soon.